Now, today we're taking a look at the Ender 5 Max. Wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry, you guys can't see me. I'm right here. Today we're taking a look at the Ender 5 Max. And you know what? The Max lives up to its name because it is Max. It is Max size, super size. And this is one of the largest printers that we have reviewed in our channel. I've been using this printer now for several months. And as you can see, I actually have the Ender Max in the enclosure, which I have to say right at the beginning of this video, that if you're considering the Ender Max because of its massive, massive build plate, you have to get the enclosure and you will enjoy this printer as we have. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at some of our prints. We'll go over the specs. We'll talk about this printer and answer the question, is this a farm capable or ready printer? And guess what? I'm not going to have you wait for the entire video. The answer is yes. And I'll show you why. And I'll share with you the prints that I've used in my farm and what it sells for me. So let's get right to it. Now let's talk about the specs before we actually start looking at this beast of a printer because it is large, it is super large. And you're gonna be seeing some of the prints that we've uh, printed. You'll see it right here on the side. This, even though it's a failed print, I wanted to share with you because this is an actual super size uh, bongo. And we have some other things that we'll share with you, but let's talk about the printer. So this printer is obviously, it's a Core XY printer, 500 millimeters per second, all the way up to 700 millimeters per second print speed. Obviously that top print speed is theoretical or you know what the system can do. I definitely don't run it at that fast speed, but it's fast enough for the prints that we need. 2000 millimeters per second max acceleration. And you know, you're talking about a build plate that is absolutely massive, 400 millimeters, 400, right? Cubed build volume. So that is massive and that really changes how we use this printer in our farm. And it is definitely one of our flagship printers in our farm because of the massive build plate. And we use this for specialty prints and use this uh, quite often. Uh, the nozzle diameter, 0 0.4, which is what you would expect. And it has a lot of other nozzles that you can work with. You could go from a six to an eight if that's what you choose. And once again, uh, with that massive build volume, the nozzle temperature on this machine is going to go up to 300 C. The heat bed is going to go up to 100 C. It does come with an epoxy flexible build plate. Uh, it does have 64 point bed leveling. The enclosure, which you see right here is like, as I mentioned, a must have. And basically it has just, <laughs> just a lot of capacity. So let's take a closer look and I'll show you some of the prints. All right, so we're going to open up the door for a second so you can see what's going on here. So uh, when I received this printer, the printer did not have this enclosure. This is something that I received after the fact. And I've been running uh, this machine now for several months, which typically before we do reviews, we really like to break in the printer to really get uh, you know, our full experience of it to see if it would fit in our farm. And for those of you who may not be familiar with our farm, we do print a lot. Uh, for, for either B2C and also B2B. Uh, we're talking about 42,000 parts a year that are being issued. And this allows me to get into a new segment uh, that we're starting to work with, which is um, some very large scale prints that I'll give you an example of one of them that we created. The build plate, uh, this is what we're talking about here. This is 400 by 400 millimeter. This is massive in size. I'm gonna grab a, a bed of one of my other printers so you can see what the difference is. I would say about 90% of our farm is bamboo. And I just wanna show you the difference between the build volume. So this is the, a build plate for my X1 carbon, for one of my X1 carbons, and you can see the difference here. Uh, when you look at the parts that we print on our, uh, for our store, for our Etsy store, and also for our Shopify store, the, this build volume gives me the ability to really, it's not even four times the volume, but the parts that I can print on this is pretty spectacular when I look at the actual jigs that we create. It gets really, really uh, large in size. And to give you a sense, I'm gonna bring in one of um, these larger parts that we've been issuing. So for example, uh, this is something that would not fit on that bamboo sheet, right? Because of the build size. But when I put it here on the ender, notice how not only does it fit, but I also have space for it to, you know, I have extra space and we're going to go ahead and zoom in really quick so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. So we're going to go into that build plate area and you can see large, large, large build surface here. And you can see how big 
of a jig that we have here. And this is a jig that is used for a special laser type that, uh, that basically is gonna be engraving a lot of pens. And this gives them the ability to engrave 24 pens at a time. And this is part of a series of jigs that gives really the engravers and, this, and these small businesses says the ability to do um, anywhere about 48 or even 72 um, pens at a time. Massive, massive opportunity for them. And the printer, you know, one of the things I will say, and you can see this a little bit here, uh, given how tall this printer is, because it has massive height, you'll notice that as this, the bed starts getting lower, you basically do lose some of that lighting. So I wish it had more lighting uh, because the lighting that it has is only one bar and that bar is right here. So if I were to say that there's an improvement that I can see is this one right here, but you can see how my hand is being um, lit up. Uh, I wish it had uh, a light bar on the sides and on the back to really illuminate this because that would be fantastic. Now, one of the things I will highlight about this printer right off the bat is that this printer is loud. And, and this is why I said that the enclosure is such a must. Uh, the speed of this printer, you hear the zip, 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 as it goes back, back and forth uh, in the acceleration. The actual enclosure does a great job of dampening that sound. It reduces it great, greatly. The top that you, that, you'll, that you saw a couple seconds ago, and let's go ahead and pan up there for a second. The top that you see right here is removable. So I can, if I'm printing PLA, I could just remove this, set it aside, and it's gonna be open on the top. But what I have found myself doing more and more is keeping it closed because of the actual, uh, I would say sound. It does dampen the sound quite a bit. So massive, uh, massive print area. And then just take a look at this, at this part. I just wanna show you it. So this is, again, one of the uh, parts that we generate. Um, it's a pretty large piece of PLA. And this, uh, we, we sell a lot of these. And the quality of this is at par with what I have in our farm. We have high standards when it comes to quality control, when it comes to you know, wh what our parts look like when they leave uh, to reach our customers. And you can see here are two. These are part of one solution uh, that really accelerates the, the production of some of our, our clients' solutions. I have another part that I'll show you that is massive as well that is for baseballs. And this is the part that we print on, on this product as well. This is a, I'll put it here on camera so you guys can see it. This is uh, for UV printers. So we have several clients that have UV printers and are looking to be able to have jigs to really personalize and accelerate how they create products. And for example, this is a baseball jig. And you can see this is pretty large. This is gonna work on, for example, a Mamaki. This could work on an Epson. This could work on a lot of the UV printers that are available on the market. And they need these large parts uh, because of the build plate size. And then here's another part that goes with this solution that is used for, for aligning the graphics and then just making sure that things come out nice and, uh, and square. But all these parts are being printed on the actual uh, Ender 5 Max. Now, I'll say that one of the challenges that I find with the Ender 5, at least, I'd say challenge, um, something that I would have liked to see address, is that the Ender 5 only deals with one color. So you'll notice I have gray and I'm using black. I actually work with three primary colors, black, gray, and white. And if I want to switch, I have to basically change the role, right? So I wish there was an AMS or a CFS solution for the Ender 5. We would definitely use it because we print so much. And we also, depending on the order, we can, we're gonna have different colors coming in. Uh, this build plate, outside of the size, and we talked a little bit about the size that we saw there. Uh, this is, I really think that of the build plates that Creality has created, this is, happens to be kind of my favorite. Uh, I've had traditional PAI sheets. Um, I do like these epoxy ones. The prints come off easy. The finish is nice and smooth on the bottom. And I know I first started seeing this with the Creality High and then I saw it with the, um, with, what is it, with the K2 Plus. And uh, also I was really happy when I saw it with this. I like it, it's low maintenance and things stick. Uh, th I don't use glue sticks at all. Matter of fact, in our entire production, there are no glue sticks allowed. I don't want the cleanup. I don't want the impact that it has to our parts and the value that we get. So uh, that's what's going on here. I wanna show you another print that we, uh, that we created. And then this one is a failed print, but I just wanted to show you. I'm gonna go ahead and pull back. 
Uh, so this is one of our uh, prints. This was a giant bangle and it was doing incredibly well. So you see right here, nice layer lines. But then what ended up happening is I went from, from uh, Creality, it was Hyper, let's see if I can get this right, Hyper PLA, then to a different brand. And I hadn't really uh, tuned that PLA. And you can see that this one was doing really well. And then when it switched, you can see how it got glossy and I started getting some waves in it. So I know that it's because the PLA itself um, hadn't been tuned to the printer because uh, I ran out of the of the white from Creality. I also then printed uh, some other, this is a, a, a stand for uh, golf balls, right? So we're doing a lot of golf balls lately, especially uh, with our UV printer. And we wanted to create this as a display. Uh, and you know, here's, uh, this is what we use like when we take pictures of the golf balls and we made this. We did run the traditional Benchy and I'll tell you, the printer didn't really do well with the Benchy, right? So this is what we have going on here. So if you look at the sides right here, this is pretty good, right? This was fine. But then here I had a lot of defects. Right. And to give you a sense also, and we'll show you this one right here, because this one, everything uh, seemed to be well, except the defect was in the same place. You can see how it looks, right? Arches are good. Um, detail is okay for the speed that we're going in and top finish is fine, but it's just this area right here. It was failing. Uh, we, uh, we run most of our shop on uh, Polymaker PLA. So this is uh, Polymaker Fossil PLA that we run. And if we don't run Polymaker, uh, we'll run maybe some bamboo filament at times, but that's what we run. And this is another part, or well, not a part. This is actually an accessory that I printed for our home. This is not something that we sell, but this is something that we use. And this was an eight hour print. This here, look, I just want you to see the detail and the overall finish of what we have here. Right. It may have some stringing in there because I really haven't cleaned it off. I printed this last night. This is a towel holder. Right. And look how beautiful this is. The finish here, the quality here again on this big guy. Spectacular. Right. And I could actually run you know, just to show you <laughs> this is how much volume. If I wanted to just do these, look at how much space I have left. Look how much space. Look at this. I could do one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these on there. And if you're running this on some of the smaller machines, you can only do one. And this did really, really well. The first layer is also really good. Look how nice those first layers are. So I really, really like that. I'm getting, um, cause I have to tune this filament. You notice right here, I have some waviness right here. I probably, I just did an upgrade on it. I may have to raise the bed just a little bit, but besides that, that is very passable. Uh, I want to show you this other print because I wanted to show you how easily supports come off and we'll go ahead and show you this guy right here. So this is a model that I found online and obviously it's kind of like a gorilla and I just want to show you this. Watch this. I'm going to start taking off all of these supports and this is again using uh, Polymaker uh, PLA, right? And notice, you know, the, the, and this guy inside is getting a little challenging. For the most part, all of these supports come off really easily, right? There's a lot of supports here, but you can see how they just snap off nicely. And as we look at the overall quality, I'll continue to pull this stuff off so you can see this. Look at how nice this is. I can see some slight defects here but I'm sure I could clean that up in the slicer. But you can see how nice this is. For my jigs, it's not a problem. This, it obviously, uh, there's a couple little defects here and there, but this, I'm sure if I slowed it down a little bit and tweaked the profile a little bit, this would have come out even better. But for the most part, that's a pretty solid print, right? Pretty solid print. The printer, Again, we're going to go ahead and, and start it up and we'll run one of the, one of the uh, prints that we had on there is the operating system is traditional. It's very similar to what you would experience if you have a Creality product. And, and the one thing that stands out with this printer is going to be this light right here. When it's printing, it's green. When it's uh, this amber color, it's ready to work with. This is supposed to be designed for farms so that 
if you see all your printers in, in, on your rack and this one is green, you know it's printing. If, if it's changed color, it's supposed to indicate that it's done or it requires attention. And that's what you'd get with something like this. Um, it's Wi-Fi and it does have a USB port. Um, in the inside, it does have the power switch, uh, but I typically don't turn off my machines unless I'm going to be cycling them. All right, so let's take a look at some of the menu options here so you can see what's going on. Um, I just upgraded the, the operating system on this and it did a full wipe. So there's a lot of, well, you don't have a lot of history. I don't have a lot of history on the machine anymore because of that wipe. And uh, so what's going on here is you immediately see what your temperature is or your nozzle, your bed. Uh, you do have on and off in the light and the fan. This does not have a camera system, but you can add a camera to it and it's very easy. Uh, and you'd be able to um, start monitoring things remotely. Uh, you do have standard um, settings here for movement. Right. So you can see your home, your Z axis. Uh, you also then have here your file folder structure, USB drive and history. You have, um, again, time zone settings, equipment offset. You have advanced settings as well in here that you can work with. They're going to give you uh, under expert mode. You'll find some things here where you can set your Z offset and you can see where I'm at. I probably have to raise that a little bit more. Um, your flow, nozzle pit calibration, bed pit adjustment and bed uh, tilt calibration. I went through all this when we uh, set it up initially. And then you notice that there's a camera option, but I have no camera, but it has uh, for the camera. And you notice that it's ready for AI detection. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and run a print. And what we're going to do is run the Benchy. Uh, and like I said, I just did the full firmware upgrade on this, which kind of erased um, all of the files that have been onboarded uh, when I was, as you print. And we're just going to let this Benchy run. But what you'll find is, and you'll see this in a couple seconds, uh, the extra starter process is pretty standard from what you find with most uh, printers. It's going to basically do the bed leveling. It's going to run the first bead of filament, and then it's going to go into print. But let's just see how it starts up. And then you should also be able to get a sense of what's this, the noise level of the printer. Uh, the printer, again, as I mentioned, is loud. It's a larger printer. This is not the kind of printer that I would say you'd want to have in your home. Uh, in an open space, if like if you would, let's say, for example, the K2 Plus, the K2 Plus that you see right there in the back, that is super silent, super duper silent. Uh, it was a little bit louder when we first had one of the original CFSs, but now that we have a more up to date CFS, it's really quiet. But this thing, when it starts cooking, like we're talking as it starts moving, it gets loud. Now, while the printer is starting up uh, for that next print job, I just want to show you some of the other parts that we generate on the printer. Uh, so this is another one of our jigs that we create on the printer. Uh, this is one of the small ones that we create on the printer. And this one, again, because of the bed size, I could do massive, massive quantities of these because this is just four inches by four inches and this is 400 millimeters, right? So I can actually get like well over a dozen of these printed on that bed. All right, so now we're starting to see the printer in action and I'm gonna bring my mic closer to the actual printer so that you can actually get a sense of what the sound is like. So a couple things that uh, stand out when the cover is not on. One is the fan. The fan is relatively loud. And then the actual zipping that takes place going from left to right as it's moving is also uh, loud. So it's not quiet in any way. But once again, it's not really intended to be the type of printer that you would have uh, in, your, in your home, right, in, in an open area, given you know, it's designed for purpose in a farm. And you can see what's going on there. It's going to speed up in a second. So there was a rapid acceleration is where the actual, i say, loudest uh, parts of the printer come from. So that wraps up our review of the Ender 5 Max. See you in the next one.